Hello and welcome. You're watching News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. We begin with a court of appeal judgment on some suits filed by the former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onowen. A three-man panel of the courts, which sat in Abuja on Friday, ruled that Onowen was denied rights to fair hearing by the Code of Conduct Tribunal when it ordered his suspension based on the false asset declaration charges filed against him at the tribunal. It however struck out the case, stating that the substantive evidence uh, had been heard and conducted at the CCT. The CCT had convicted Onowen on six counts bordering on false asset declaration and order that he should be removed from office and banned from holding public office for 10 years. It also ordered the forfeiture of the money in the five accounts which the defendants were said to have failed to declare as part of his assets. However, Onowen appealed to the judgment challenging the legality of his trial at the CCT, among other issues. No fewer than 894 children, including 106 girls, recruited by the government-backed uh, backed civilian joint tax force, CJTF, in the fight against Boko Haram insurgents in northeast Nigeria, have been released. Now, according to the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, they were used by the local militia force for both combatant and non-combatant roles before their rescue. The release follows a commitment made by the CJTF in 2017, promising to stop recruiting child soldiers and release the ones they hold. UNICEF says the move now brings to the total number of children freed to over 1,700. According to UNICEF, more than 3,500 children have been drawn into non-state armed groups including Boko Haram between 2013 and 2017 in the country's northeast region. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPANG, says it will join the organized labor in its planned protest on Monday. NUPANG chairman William Sapoeha said this during a press conference in Lagos. He says Frank Kukuri is the authentic chairman of the NSITF and NUPANG will not accept the appointment of any other person to chair the board? First of all, we made our position known that any inauguration that is short of making uh, uh, Chief Frank Kokori, the board chairman, is not acceptable to us. Because we saw this as a gang up, an affront on labor. Our position here is that we stand with the position of organized labor on any action that will be taken on this issue. And uh, uh, if there's going to be a protest a match on, uh, on Monday by organized labor, for sure, for sure, Nupeng will be part of it. And uh, we'll make sure, to, again, we'll mobilize all our members across the country to be part you know, of that noble protest. Ahead of the pre-hearing session for their petition challenging the results of the February 23rd general elections, the People's Democratic Party PDP is demanding the withdrawal of Justice Zainab Bukachua as a member of the five-man panel of the Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal. Bukachua is the president of the Court of Appeal. In a petition written to her office on Thursday, the PDP alleged that Bukachua, who is the chairman of the five-man panel, would likely be biased in the handling of the tribunal's proceedings. They say the appeal court head has ties with some members of the All Progressives Congress. The party also complained that Bukachua could have, by comments she made during the inaugural sitting of the tribunal on Wednesday, prejudged its petition. The party's petition is one of the four filed at the tribunal to challenge President Buhari and APC's victory at the poll. General Abayami Olunishaki, chief of the Fence Staff, remains upbeat that the current security challenges in Nigeria would soon be a theme of the past. Olunishaki expressed this optimism during his remarks to round off the two-day defense uh, headquarters training conference in Abuja themed capacity development to combat emerging security challenges. The CDS says the armed forces have identified all strategies to tackle the Boko Haram insurgency kidnapping and banditry, he further calls for a synergy and coordination among the Nigerian army. With the vigor, passion, and exceptional strategic solution that have been proffered here, the Boko Haram insurgency, 
kidnapping, banditry, and other transnational crime pushing our country to the precipice would be completely eradicated. Nonetheless, achieving this noble objective will require our individual and collective efforts at every stage sphere of our leadership hierarchy. The American author Helen Keller famously said, and I quote, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much, unquote. It is germane to emphasize that unless we create beings and appreciable security, security together, other efforts of government to rebuild ravaged communities or containing other socioeconomic problems may not be realized. Nigeria Defense Headquarters has unveiled the third edition of the Armed Forces and Security Agencies Half Marathon Championship for 2019. The event holding in the fifth, on the 15th of June will feature a total of 11 security agencies and services. These services will compete in the 21-25 uh, kilometers half marathon championship, which began two, year, two ago. It is in compliance with these directives that the third edition is being organized this year, and the CDS has approved the 15th of June for the event. 11 security agencies, including services, are expected to actively participate and complete the 21.5 kilometer long half marathon. The full marathon is 42 kilometers. An innovation has been added to this year's championship, and that is the crafting of an official logo for the half marathon championship that signifies the cohesion and synergy between the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies through sports. The Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, APWEN, has organized an annual lecture to enlighten the public on the much dreaded topic of writing a will. A cross session of engineers, lecturers, and lawyers at the lecture have been explaining the importance of writing a will and why Nigerians should write theirs. This next report tells us more. Speaking from the grave, that's the topic of the lecture holding at Neka House, Ikeja, Lagos. The Association of Women Engineers of Nigeria, APWEN, have gathered here to educate the public on the importance of writing a will. Engineer Olutsumbi Maduka, founder of APWEN, clarified that it's important to write a will because of the inevitability of death and the uncertainty of its timing. Most of us run away from making wills, whether we are old or young. As we were just uh, joking at the table, when you say somebody will uh, come with, to make a will, whether your life uh, old or young, I say never. It's not my portion. And that means that it's not their portion that they should die, but sooner or later we're all going to die. And we don't know when. And what we found, especially with women, is that they are not usually treated well, especially when the spouse dies. So it's very necessary that at least we know our right, we know exactly what to expect if anything happens. When people are well informed in our society, especially in Nigeria, people will be well informed. Uh, most of these things, even to the, to the educated ones, to the exposed ones, some of them are still ignorant of a uh, writing way. So we should not even talk of uh, either the inexposed or the uneducated ones. I've seen so many educated ones who don't even take it serious. When you talk to some men, you talk to some women, they'll be thinking maybe you are wishing them dead. It is not so. We should be able to take the advocacy very, very serious. And we should be able to know that death can come anytime. Every individual, every human being needs to have a will because death is something that is inevitable. All of us will definitely die. We don't need to fear. We don't need to be afraid of death. Because death will definitely meet all of us. So we don't need to exercise that fear. We need to live a will. Even if it doesn't mean that we're not going to die. Everybody will still die. But we need to live a will. So that you don't cause confusion in your homes. Speakers at the lecture also addressed speculations on who should write a will and the age requirements to do so. Once you have assets that you think should be inherited, should 
anything happens. We all we are all going to die one day. Nobody is going to live forever. So in such a situation, as soon as you have assets to dispose of, you write a will. I got my first will when I was going to have my second child to appoint a guidance for my child that I had before going to have the second one. So, so that you can have a guidance for the child. That was my own way of whatever. I, I, I believe that as soon as you have any asset that is possible to be inherited, then it's good to make a will. Their father explained that writing a will has saved lots of families from disputes when the breadwinner passes on. It's always better to write a will. It's always better. It's sure. Nobody will have to contest. Although I'm not saying that people don't contest wills. They do contest wills. But at least it will reduce infighting among beneficiaries. You need a will to ensure that you rest in peace. You need a will to ensure that whatever you have is disposed properly. In cases where you have wills, most of the time, there is some murder. Even if there is a dispute will, they need to go to court to change that will. That has been the practice. There's a notion in Africa that talking about or writing a will means death. Now, nobody wants to die, so many avoid the subjects like a plague. But sooner or later, they realize that a will could have protected their families from chaos. As his engineers have explained, writing a will allows you control over your possessions even while you're no more. Aneta Felix, TV360, Nigeria. Workers in Abuja under the Nigerian Labour Congress are set to embark on a one-day continued delay in the inauguration of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund Board. And the President Ayuba Waba made the announcement at the end of an emergency meeting of the Central Working Committee of the Union on Thursday in Abuja. Fidelia Aguncha now tells us more. It seems the face off between the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Minister of Employment, Chris Ngigi, is far from over. And one man at the centre of all this drama is Frank Kokori. Kokori, a former Labour leader, was on October 2017 nominated by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo to chair the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund. But this nomination was rejected by Ngigi. He allegedly delayed the inauguration of the board and eventually took out Kokori's name from the members' list. This soon led to a protest by the Labour unions. They barricaded the Asukuru residence of the minister and the protest soon turned violent after unknown hoodlums violently attacked the Labour members. At this press conference, NLC President Ayuba Waba speaks on the issue. On the appointment of Kokori, Kokori was appointed on merit. That I can testify. You recall also that the president was away, but we'll, we also wrote formal communication to the president. To this date, we have not received a feedback, but we have wrote officially. We have also communicated to all the security agencies. So what I'm telling you is what is in place now, and that's why we have to scale our struggle to the next level. Because you recall we gave him an ultimatum after the failed inauguration to inaugurate the board before 1st of May. It's part of the reason that he cannot attend our meeting. If he would have attended the meeting, he would have seen another side of Nigerian workers. That's a fact. Whether he has flu or he has headache or he has diarrhea is not actually the reason. He cannot attend because it's an, a, a, a meeting of Nigerian workers. And having treated Nigerian workers in such a manner, he cannot be there. So we are still waiting for response, but we have communicated officially. And uh, we are still waiting for response. And yes, the need to actually follow up on those uh, processes. But in a swift reaction, Labour Minister Chris Ngigi condemns the action of the union. I don't know what to say about it. I'm, I was speechless. That is not trade unionism. It is hooliganism. And I have been preaching that uh, to Labour that uh, you cannot exchange hooliganism for trade unionism. Trade unionism even means you dialogue. You dialogue, you, you discuss, you talk. That is uh, the art of it. That's why we call it uh, uh, social dialoguing. Because you must continue to talk and reach an agreement on whatever you want. Even if it's government that wants something, you continue uh, inviting them. If it's labor, you continue coming. 
To, because if you employer, private employer, you continue engaging them in argument. I am the minister permitted by law to do that recommendation. And I'm telling you unequivocally that I did not recommend him. Simple. Obviously not impressed with the minister's reaction, the labor union has now charged its members to prepare for another protest on Monday, May 13. They are demanding apology and apology from Nungigi and a probe on the attack on its members at the minister's residence. CWC expressed shock that whereas there were attachment of security agents there, which is actually the case to protect and ensure that the process is peaceful, it was under their watchful eyes that these defenseless workers were actually attacked. And clearly we can say that that apart from condemnation, we demand full investigation and the prosecution of those that are involved. Accordingly, CWC also resolves to demand an unconditional and unqualified apology from Minister of Labor Chris Ingeke and by extension government, both for the primitive behavior of the minister and its Suspicious silence. The CWC therefore resolved to hold Dr. Chris Ngege and members of his family personally responsible for the violence visited on the family and the workers that were injured. And we have also directed all our workers, particularly at the airports in Nigeria and around the world, that wherever they are seen, they should also receive the same disgrace. Workers at all our airports particularly also in the diaspora where ITUC operates, particularly in the 163 countries where ITUC have members that at all the airports, his name and identity have already been circulated and that the same disgrace should be extended to him and members of his family. Contrary to allegations made by the labor union, Ngigi has denied inviting thugs to attack the protesting workers. The minister is now given the NLC seven days to apologize for invading his home or face the consequences. Fidelia Aguncha, TV360, Abuja. Thousands of women under the banner Coalition for Inclusion of Women in Governance have staged the protest at the National Assembly demanding women inclusion in the leadership of the Ninth Assembly. The women drawn from different women organizations, gender rights activists and non-governmental organizations are demanding 50% of the leadership slot in the National Assembly for women. They say after the general elections in which women participated massively, the few women in Parliament have been sidelined for leadership of the National Assembly. We are asking that women should be recognized. And we are particularly zeroing in on Nkiru Onye Jocha. She is going to represent our women. I want to make it clear that politics is a game of number. And we are more in number than the men. Therefore, we should be given recognition of our number. If you, if you have uh, started through the, the, the voting uh, uh, pattern, you will see that women are the people who come and stand in line and vote. We are asking for is that this present administration should include women in the cabinet. We are asking that the leadership of the National Assembly should reflect the presence of women. To that effect, our request is 50-50. We are behind you know, the League of Nations that are progressive. The Nigerian Constitution, Chapter 14, commands Mr. President and indeed all agents of government, agencies of government, to apply the federal character in such a way that they will command national loyalty. We are asking those 10 women at the National Assembly be given principal position. Yes. Yes. Gender equity. We are not here for confrontation, we are here for peaceful, because because you refuse to call us for peaceful dialogue. Yes. yes. And we count. All of a sudden, women has become invisible. We were out there voting. We've been denied even going into primaries because men took it. Today, we are all out in peaceful protests. Give us opportunity for our women, the nine women or ten at the National Assembly, to have principal position. You're still watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back. Let's now join Fidelia Agunsha for the news in business. Hello, Fidelia. Hi, Aneta. Please let us know what's making headlines in business today. Well, the United States has more than doubled tariffs on Chinese products and a steep escalation of the trade war between both countries. Tariffs on affected Chinese goods have risen to 25% from 10% and Beijing has vowed to retaliate. The tariff high comes as high-level officials from both sides are attempting to salvage a trade deal in Washington. Tariffs are taxes paid by importers of foreign goods, so the 25% tariff will be paid by American companies who bring Chinese goods into the country. Oil prices edged up on Friday, but West Still set for, to fall over the week as support due to supply concerns were countered by trade tensions stoked by a U.S. move to hike tariffs on Chinese goods. Brent crude oil features were up 29 cents at $70.68 dollars a barrel, while U.S. crude features were up 13 cents at $61.83 dollars a barrel. Now, both contracts were on track for weekly losses. The United United States escalated its tariff war with China on Friday by increasing levies to 25 for 25 uh, percent for 200 billion dollar worth of Chinese goods. Trump ordered a tariff increase, saying China broke the deal by going back on previous commitments. Well, up next is a review of the stock market. After this. Welcome back. As hopes for all hopes for the return of the bulls crashed alongside key market indicators at the end of trading this week. Now it has been a long bearish run for investors at the NSC and the All Share Index is on a free fall, shedding about 365 points that since the start of trading this week to close at 20,847 basis points while the market value dropped by 137 billion naira to close the week at 10.842 trillion naira. Now, despite a surge in global oil prices, Seplat Petroleum Limited leads the pack of losers with a 57 naira drop in its share price. Also fallen is Afripood, now losing its spot on the gainers chart as seen yesterday. Now it's fallen by 9.92%. On the other hand, and that's the least order pack of gainers, we can see that Stambik IBTC, Guinness Nigeria, UACN and Echo Bank Transnational Incorporative, that is ETI, were able to stay afloat amid the heavy storm of losses seen in the market today. Now, in summary, we can see that the value of shares traded totals 1.36 billion naira, and that's about 800 million naira lower than what was posted yesterday. The volume of shares is higher rising by 20 million units and uh, compared to how the market uh, fared on Sunday. Now let's now look at activities on the global market. We can see it's all in the reds, just like the Nigeria Stock Exchange, the FTSE dropping by 0.5%, the Dow by 0.42%, and the Nikkei by 0.27%. And now this is largely owing to the tariff hike by U.S. Uh, on Chinese goods and uh, China obviously uh, vowing to retaliate uh, on that move. Oh, that is from the world of business. It's back to Annette Felix. Thanks for that uh, update, Fidele. If you ask me, I would say that's a poor wrap to the end of the week. Moving on, we see that South African President Cyril Ramaphosa's ruling ANC was in touching distance of election victory on Friday, but with diminished support, results showed the African National Congress ANC has been in power since 1994 and they held a very comfortable lead with nearly 57 percent after three quarters of voting districts were officially tallied following Wednesday's vote. But the result will be the party's worst national showing since Nelson Mandela led the ANC to victory in the first multiracial polls after appetite ended in 1994. Amaphosa took over last year when the party forced then President Jacob Zuma to resign after nine years, dominated by corruption allegations and economic problems. In sports, the French Football Federation have handed Paris Saint-Germain forward Neymar a three-match suspension 
after punching a Renee supporter in the aftermath of his side scoop the France final defeat. The League One champions, who had uh, uh, Kylian Mpape sent off late in the game, were beaten 9 3 on penalties following a 2 2 draw at Stade de France as their hopes of a domestic double was dashed. Neymar was then caught on video attacking a fan on his way to collect his runners up medal as the PSG team were ridiculed by the jubilant uh, Rene supporters. Uh, France's football governing body have now announced that the Brazilian international will be forced to miss three domestic matches with a further two matches suspended that's it from here on news now on tv 360 nigeria thanks for watching bye for now